I've got several hand planes here that need some sharpening work. Stick around and I'll show you how to get the blades super sharp and how to tune these planes. I'm Greg Swenson and this is the Swenson Wood Shop. Thanks for selecting my channel. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to click the subscribe button and then that little bell to be notified when I upload new videos. This is the third video in a four-part series on how to sharpen woodworking tools. If you haven't already watched part one, I recommend that you circle back and watch that video as well since it contains some fundamental information that this video builds on. I've got several hand planes here that I'm going to use to demonstrate how I sharpen planes. There are a lot of different types and sizes of hand planes, but I think the techniques I'll use for getting these three planes ready for use can be directly applied to most other bevel up or bevel down hand planes, certainly to all the planes I have, and to many specialty planes with some minor interpretations. This is a Line Nelson number four smoothing plane. I have two blades for this bevel down plane. The blade currently in the plane has a primary bevel ground at 25 degrees with no back bevel, which combined with the 45 degree frog yields an effective cutting angle of 45 degrees because of the bevel down configuration. On this extra blade, I'm going to add a 10 degree back bevel which will make the effective cutting angle 55 degrees when installed in this plane. The steeper cutting angle should make it particularly effective for cleaning up or smoothing surfaces with highly figured grain, although the resistance to the movement of the blade through the wood will increase because of the higher cutting angle. In other words, I'll have to push harder. I'm going to walk through the steps to sharpen both of these blades. I prefer to hollow grind the bevel surface to minimize the amount of metal that needs to be honed and polished. I talked about flat grinding versus hollow grinding in video one of this series, so I won't belabor that subject again here. Suffice to say, I hollow grind to expedite the sharpening process, and I suggest that you circle back to video one for more discussion on that subject. This original blade has previously been hollow ground and the bevel doesn't need regrinding yet. So I'll set it aside for this step. This new blade, however, I will hollow grind to expedite the sharpening process. I've adjusted the tool rest on my grinder to position the hollow grind for this blade and I'm using this tool holder to help me get the grind square. I've set the speed control at about 1500 RPM so I should be able to grind this blade without a significant and potentially detrimental heat buildup. Though, with as much metal as I'll be removing, there's going to be some heat buildup, so I have a small cup of water on hand to cool the blade when it gets too warm to handle. That looks about right. As you can see, I don't center the hollow grind to keep a flat margin at the heel of the bevel. As I discussed in video number one, I don't sharpen freehand, so I don't need a second flat margin on the bevel to help register the blade to the surface of the whetstone. For me, that second flat margin is just more steel to hone and a waste of my time and effort. The single flat margin right at the cutting edge is all I want or need 
to hone. With the hollow grinding completed, the next step is to hone and polish the two intersecting surfaces to get a zero radius edge. I'll start with the bevel surface first. I use a honing guide, so I need to set the protrusion or angle of the blade in the honing guide. Both of these blades have a primary bevel ground at 25 degrees, so I'll use the 25 degree stop on my angle jig. If the cutting edge is new, as this one is, I start honing the bevel with a 1500 grit stone. If the edge has previously been sharpened and is in good condition, as is generally the case in normal use and is true of this blade, I can start with a 5000 grit stone. You'll know you've reached a zero radius edge when a wire burr forms on the back side of the cutting edge. I talked about the concept of a zero radius edge in video one of this series. The burr can be very fine and difficult to see without magnification, but you should be able to feel it if you use a sensitive part of your hand. If you don't feel a burr, continue working with that grit until a burr forms. I generally give each grit about 30 strokes to establish a burr. Most of the time I get a burr within about 10 strokes, but if you don't feel a burr within 30, then back up a grit. If you find yourself stepping back to your 1000 or 1500 grit, which is the coarsest whetstone I use on the bevel surface, and you're still not feeling a burr, you probably have a significant wear bevel on the backside, or there's some other issue with the backside of the blade. Your options at that point are either to lap the backside flat, which is a lot of work, or as I prefer, regrind the bevel all the way to the cutting edge and reestablish a new honed bevel. Quite frankly, grinding is a lot faster than relapping the backside. Each grit will remove the burr formed by the previous grit and form a new smaller burr. Though I normally knock off the burr on each grit by flipping the blade over and carefully giving it a stroke on the backside before moving on to the next grit. By doing that, I know when I feel a burr, it was actually formed by the finer grit I'm now working with. Work successively through the grits, cleaning the honing guide and cutting edge to avoid transferring coarse abrasive particles to the finer stones. Okay, we've got a good burr there now. We'll knock that off on the back side. And move up to the 8000 grit. Since this blade is for a smoothing plane, I'm going to add a slight camber to the cutting edge by putting some additional pressure on the outside edges of the blade as I hone and polish it. I'll alternate between sides using the same amount of pressure and number of strokes to make the camber uniform between the sides. Okay, that's good. Have a nice burr. And now the 12,000 grit. Again, I'll alternate between sides using the same amount of pressure and number of strokes to make the camber uniform between the sides. Uh, 
Okay, that should be good. The next step is to polish the back side. The ruler trick creates a micro bevel on the back side of the plane blade, so we're only polishing a very narrow margin at the cutting edge, and the effort required to polish this narrow margin is significantly less than that required to polish the entire back side, or even the section closest to the cutting edge. The ruler trick, popularized by David Charlesworth, is so named because we use a thin stainless steel ruler to elevate one side of the blade on the whetstone. This ruler is only half a millimeter thick and the micro bevel it creates is about half a degree, so it has no impact on the cutting geometry. I'll place the ruler on the edge of my whetstone like so. The stroke I want is about half an inch on and off the edge of the water stone. I can skip the coarser grits that I normally work through because I'm polishing such a narrow margin right at the cutting edge that even a whetstone this fine will create a polished margin I need in just a few strokes. Sharp blade. Now I'll repeat the honing steps on this other blade. I've reflattened my whetstones. I do that off camera over at my utility sink. It contains the mess of the sink and it's just easier for me. If you want to know more about that process, circle back to video one. I've set the protrusion or the angle of the blade in the honing guide for 25 degrees. I'll start with the 1500 grit stone and work through the grits, checking for a burr before moving to the next finer grit. Okay, we have a nice burr there. Let's try knocking that down. And there's the burr again. And the 8,000 grit. Okay, and there's our burr. And I'm going to give it a little extra on either side to help promote a little camber across the blade. Okay. And now our 12,000 grit. Okay. On this second blade, I'm going to add a 10 degree back bevel, so I'll skip the ruler trick. The back bevel will create a polished intersecting surface, just as the ruler trick does, so no additional polishing on the back side of the blade is necessary. To create the back bevel, I've used the 10 degree stop 
on my angle setting jig. Just like honing the primary bevel, I'll work through the grit, checking for a burr before moving to the next finer grit. Okay. And that feels pretty good. I think we've got it. So now I have a sharp cutting edge on both of these blades. But the work doesn't end here. The plain body needs some attention to tune or set it up to achieve the best results. The first thing I'll do is check the sole or bottom for flatness. You really don't need to be too finicky and have the entire sole dead flat. As long as there's good even contact at the toe, the leading edge of the mouth, and the heel, the plane will register flat to the work surface and hold the wood fibers under compression just in advance of the cutting edge. Some black magic marker will help show me the contact points. like so. This smoothing plane is fairly flat, but then I've been using it for several years now and I went through this process when I first purchased it. I'll give it a little flattening work using my diamond reference lapping plate to demonstrate the process. You left it over by the sink. Oh, thank you. This side is for flattening the whetstones. And this side is used for lapping tools flat. Okay. That looks good. As I said, I worked on this plane when I purchased it, and I recall that I spent about an hour flattening it on a coarse diamond plate. The very end of the heel here is still about a thousandth of an inch out of flat, but this far back on the heel, it's just not worth the effort it would take to fix it. As you can see, we have good contact here at the toe, the leading edge of the mouth, and in this area back here on the heel. I also purchased a new chip breaker for use with this new blade. The leading edge of the chip breaker needs to sit flush against the blade, so I'll hone the contact edge of the chip breaker using my Corsa's whetstone with a slight undercut. A little bit more. Okay. 
When the chip breaker is tightened down against the blade, the leading edge should contact the blade without any gaps that shavings might get lodged in. I generally position the leading edge of the chip breaker within half a millimeter of the cutting edge. So now I have two blade setups that I can interchange in this plane body depending on the type of work or wood I'm working with. I've marked them with an H for the high angle setup and an S for the standard setup. Let's set up the plane using the new high angle blade because I'm kind of anxious to see how it works. The blade on this smoothing plane is installed bevel side down and I want to position the cutting edge as close to the leading edge of the mouth as I can. Ideally the opening should be just slightly larger than the thickness of a shaving which for a smoothing plane is generally not very thick. To adjust the position of the blade relative to the mouth I have to move the frog, the part that holds the blade at its bedded angle which is 45 degrees on this plane. To do this I need to loosen the two locking screws on either side of the frog and then turn the adjustment screw in or out as needed to position the frog and the cutting edge. Okay, looks like the blade is nice and close to the leading edge of the mouth. Tighten the lever cap just a little bit. I want the lever cap snug enough to hold the blade and chip breaker in place, but not so tight as to make movement of the blade depth adjustment knob difficult. Just a lateral adjustment. Okay, that looks pretty good. This is a piece of marble wood. It has a dense interlocking grain that can be difficult to work. This will be a real challenge for the new high angle blade. I'll adjust the depth of cut by backing the blade out and then advancing the blade downward slowly while taking test cuts. I want the final position of the blade to be a result of a downward turn of the adjustment wheel to remove any backlash that might allow the blade to shift under cutting pressure. I'll also adjust the lateral setting of the blade to set it horizontal across the width of the plane. The lateral adjustment is made by sliding this lever towards the side of the blade that is protruding too much or cutting too deeply. Well, not too bad. I don't feel any tear out. But you sure have to push hard to get that blade to cut through that dense wood. So that's my process for sharpening and tuning a smoothing plane. 
I think the techniques I use for getting this plane ready for use can be applied to most bench planes with bevel down blades and chip breakers. They're certainly the same steps I would use to sharpen and tune my other bevel down bench planes. But now let's take a look at some examples of bevel up planes. These are both Lie Nelson bevel up block planes. This is a standard angle block plane. This plane uses a bevel up blade honed at 25 degrees and is bedded in the body at 20 degrees for an effective cutting angle of 45 degrees. This is a low angle skew block plane. This plane uses a bevel up blade ground at 25 degrees and is bedded in the body at 12 degrees for an effective cutting angle of 37 degrees. It has a nifty little fence that attaches to the side and a removable side panel to convert it into a rabbit plane. I thought this would be an interesting tool for a demonstration since it's really just a low angle block plane albeit with a skewed cutting edge. But the technique for sharpening this blade is really the same as it is for any other plane iron except that you have to hold this blade at a skewed 18 degree angle. This blade has previously been sharpened but not hollow ground and I honestly I think I did a crappy job sharpening it. I think that's why I haven't used this tool as much as I'd like to. I'm going to try my new and improved sharpening methods and see if I can move this tool back to my I love it list. The first step is to hollow grind the bevel surface. As I mentioned earlier, I hollow grind to expedite the sharpening process. This standard blade has previously been hollow ground and the honed margin is still narrow and in good condition. So I can set it aside and skip the grinding. This skew blade needs to be hollow ground. I've adjusted the tool rest on my grinder to position the hollow grind for this blade and I set the speed control at about 1500 RPM to minimize heat buildup. I also have a small cup of water on hand to cool the blade when it gets too warm. I've adjusted this tool holder to hold the blade at an 18 degree angle from square to the grinding wheel. Let's see how it works. That looks about right. As I previously said, I normally don't grind all the way to the cutting edge unless I need to reestablish the edge. And we've stopped just short of the edge. With the hollow grinding complete, the next step is to hone and polish the two intersecting surfaces to get a zero radius edge. For both of these blades, I'm going to use the ruler trick to expedite polishing the back side of the blade. Okay, there's a lot of online discussion on the merits of using the ruler trick on low angle bevel up blades. Some think that low angle planes with a bed angle of 12 degrees should not have any back bevels added to their blades because it reduces the clearance angle or increases the wear bevel. And I agree in principle with that statement. But I also think that the half a degree back bevel created by using the ruler trick is negligible and shouldn't be included in any discussion about larger multi-degree back bevels like that which I just honed on the backside of the second smoothing plane blade. Agree or disagree, 
the ruler trick is still the quickest method I know of to get a zero radius edge. Enough said. The process of honing and polishing bevel up blades is identical to that used for bevel down blades and is repetitious of what I just demonstrated for the smoothing plane, so I'm going to step through this a little quicker. I'll start with the standard angle blade. This blade has a primary bevel ground at 25 degrees and I'm not adding a micro bevel, so I'll use the 25 degree stop on my angle jig. I've reflattened my whetstones over at the utility sink. Now I'll work through the grits starting with the 1500. The next step is to polish the backside. I'll use the ruler trick to create a micro bevel on the backside of the blade that is about half a degree and has no discernible impact on the cutting geometry. I'll put my ruler on the edge of the whetstone like so. The stroke I want is a very short on and off the edge of the whetstone, no more than about half an inch. I think that's sharp enough. Now let's work on the skew blade. I've changed the jaws on my honing guide to a set I purchased for skew blades. This set will hold the blade at an 18 degree offset. I've reflattened my whetstones over at the utility sink. Now I'll hone the bevel surface starting with my 1500 grit stone and working through the grits. Okay, have a good burr. And the 5,000 grit, excuse me, 8,000 grit. As I stated earlier, I'm using the ruler trick to create a micro bevel on the back side of the blade. That's about half a degree and has no discernible impact on the cutting geometry. The stroke I want is a very short on and off the edge of the whetstone, no more than about half an inch. That should do it. I 
I guess that's sharp. Most bevel up planes have fewer adjustable parts than bevel down planes. Neither of these block planes has a chip breaker or movable frog or lateral adjustment lever. But there are still a couple things we need to pay attention to. The first thing to check is a sole or bottom for flatness. The process for doing this is the same as what I previously demonstrated for the smoothing plane, so I won't repeat that step again. As I said earlier, you don't need to be too finicky and have the entire sole dead flat. As long as you're a good, even contact at the toe, the leading edge of the mouth, and the heel, the plane will register flat to the work surface and hold the wood fibers under compression just in advance of the cutting edge. This standard angle block plane does have an adjustable mouth. Loosening this knob on the front allows this section of the toe, called the shoe, to slide back and forth to adjust the clearance between the leading edge of the mouth and the cutting edge. I've positioned the shoe so that I have about 1 32nd of an inch clearance to the cutting edge. I recommend if you have a plane with an adjustable mouth that you make this clearance adjustment on the shoe prior to flattening the bottom of the plane. I've seen a couple instances where the machining of the shoe's track wasn't parallel to the bottom of the plane which will cause problems if you adjust it after flattening the bottom. And generally for most woodworkers, once you set the clearance, you'll probably never change it. The depth adjustment on both of these planes is made via this knurled knob at the rear of the plane. So I want to adjust the tightness of the cap iron such that the blade is held firmly in place but not so tight as to restrict its movement when making depth adjustments. I also want the final depth of the blade to be a result of a downward turn of the adjustment knob to remove any backlash that might allow the blade to shift under cutting pressure. And while this plane may not have a lateral blade adjustment lever, I can use a small hammer to tap the blade to one side or the other to balance the blade protrusion. That looks good. Well, I don't know if I'm ready to put it back on my I love it list, but it does work. So that's my process for sharpening hand planes. It's straightforward and simple. I hollow grind to expedite the honing process. I then hone and polish the bevel until I feel a burr on the back side working through the grits. I use the ruler trick to polish a micro bevel on the back side and then adjust the plane. Follow those simple steps and you'll get a zero radius sharp edge and a plane that can cut whisper thin shavings every time. Now sit back and relax and watch part four of my video series on how to sharpen scrapers. And if you haven't already watched part one of the basics or part two on chisels, circle back and watch those videos as well. Till next time, I'm Greg Swenson and this has been the Swenson Woodshop.